Brother lads, welcome back to the Kosi Arsenal podcast. My name is Kosi. Welcome back to brand a new video. This is the latest Arsenal news and transfer news as well. Ramsdale to Chelsea is back on. Chelsea desperately need a goalkeeper uh, this summer. And Ramsdale is number one on their priority transfer list. We're going to be di diving into that story. Eddie Nketiah has decided to leave Arsenal, but to stay in London with clubs including Crystal Palace, um, Brighton, Everton, all interested, and also uh, the newly promoted Leicester City. But the player wants to stay in London. And that could actually change uh, the dimension of this deal. We'll be talking about that deal as well. I'll uh, we'll be talking about Marcus Rashford. Manchester United want 70 million for Marcus Rashford. But of course, Marcus Rashford says he wants to stay at Man United and fight for his place in the team. And we'll be talking about Gary Neville, who has said that Arsenal's title hopes are going to be crushed at the Old Trafford by Manchester United. So I want your thoughts there in the comment box below. Lots of topics to dive into. Gary never thinks that Arsenal will not win at the Old Trafford against Manchester United. Uh, contrary to Jurgen Klopp who said, if Man United play the way they've been playing against Arsenal at the Old Trafford, Arsenal will win that game. But Gary never says Arsenal's title hopes are going to be crushed by Man United at the Old Trafford. What do you think about Aaron Ramsdale going to Chelsea? I don't like it. I really don't. I don't want Chelsea to have um, a good number nine, a, a good a, a good number one. I don't want Chelsea to have Aaron Ramsdale. It will be a bad move in my opinion. And of course, talk to me about Edin Ketia, your boy. Because when I said Edin Ketia should be leaving Arsenal, most of you came out and said, because you are being rude and harsh to Edin Ketia. He deserves to be at Arsenal. Your boy is going to be leaving this summer and is going to be staying in London. So where do you think Edin Ketia should be going? Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for me, and let's get the party started. Let's start off with that big story um, around Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford um, is going to command £70 million this summer if he's going to leave Manchester United. Now, the story, as it goes, Manchester United would love to, to support Marcus Rashford uh, through his bad patch of form. But if significant offers arrive... Man United will be listening. We, we we are told that Arsenal and uh, PSG are interested in the in the England international. Mikel Arteta being a very big fan of Marcus Rashford, and of course, Mikel thinks that he can turn his career around. He can turn his form around. Um, I'm not really sure why Mikel thinks that way or why Mikel uh, believes that Marcus Rashford is the player Arsenal should sign this summer. Uh, but at least what we know is that Mikel has followed Marcus Rashford for some time, even in 2021 uh, when. Marcus Rashford was not really doing well. Arsenal was sniffing around him. And at some point in time, for me, Rashford is that, is, is that one player that eventually Arsenal will sign. Like, he's more of... Um, you know, a Kai Havers kind of signing, a Mason Mount kind of signing. Those kind, of, those um, you know, signings that you hear, and you're like, my club is not going to do that deal. And then eventually, uh, you end up with that player in your side. Now, he's not a popular player amongst the Arsenal fan base, especially the Arsenal fan base of seventy thousand on this channel. Seventy-seven thousand people on this channel don't believe Marcus Rashford is the right player. To sign for Arsenal, and I cannot really, um, you know, debunk your opinions. I really think Marcus Rashford needs to prove that he is the guy before he signs for Arsenal. Now he is a good goal scorer, and he does get on the score sheet when he's in form. He can beat a player when he's in form. But the problem with Marcus Rashford is inconsistency, right? He's never in form. He's always inconsistent, um, and you can never trust his output. He's not your uh, Rafa Liao. He's not your Vinicius Junior. He's not that top-level winger that you know consistently is going to be performing at the levels uh, that you want your winger to be performing at. But honestly, I cannot rule this deal out. Now, Marcus Rashford, as a player, his personal preference is to stay at Manchester United and fight for his place. He doesn't want to go anywhere. That will be a very good story for the Arsenal fans because as far as I understand, Arsenal fans are not big fans of Marcus Rashford. Don't lie to me. You've talked to me in the comment box below. I have seen your comments. You're not big fans of Marcus Rashford and I appreciate that and we will leave it at that. But anyway, 70 million for me uh, is a little bit too much. But like I said on the podcast last night, if Arsenal... And Mikel Atta believe that Marcus Rashford is the guy, 60 to 70 million is, is a no-brainer. Because the top attackers in, 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 the, in Europe right now, how much are they going to be commanding? Victor Yokares, 70 to 80 million. Osimen, 100. Isak, 100. Um, maybe Jonathan David, 50 to 60 million. So again, 
you know, 60 to 70 has become the average price you sign an average player for. Kai Havers not doing very well at Chelsea, 65 million. Declan Rice in the top in, in the form of his life at West Ham, 100 million. So Marcus Rashford for um 70 million, not a bad deal, but I still want to see if Mikel Arteta is the guy trying to push for Marcus Rashford deal to happen at Arsenal. Now, talking about things happening, Chelsea could have one miracle of a deal happening to them, and that could be this guy, Aaron Ramsdale, right there on your screen. Now, according to Sammy Markbo from the Daily Mail, Chelsea have a desire to sign Aaron Ramsdale this summer, and that desire is actually you know culminating into big interest and it could culminate into a move this transfer window now for me i'm on the side i'm still on the side of james lehman james lehman has come out and said he, he, you know he, he said i never ever understood the ramsdale decision if you have a good, brave English goalkeeper at a big English club doing well, then you bring in a new Spanish guy who's never played for a big club at that level, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, I'm not trying to say that um, James Lehman is 100% right because we have seen what Raya has done for Arsenal. And of course, you know, I am a big, big Spain uh, you know, fan and I love Spanish players and I think Raya is a quality goalkeeper as well. But... The Ramsdale decision, right from the day one, it didn't make a lot of sense for me. Like, that 30 million could have been spent somewhere else. That 30 million could have been spent um, in a much better position. And I'm not wiser than Mikel Arteta, and I don't understand football more than Mikel Arteta, or even close to Mikel Arteta. But I think Mikel knows as well that he could be in the same position, right, right now, with Aaron Ramsdale. I don't think he's a bad goalkeeper. I don't think that um, he is, um, you know, bad quality. I think Raya is kind of an upgrade, but also not a massive upgrade. I think Raya, if you ask me, he is um, a 7 out of 10 goalkeeper, and Ramsdale is a 6.5 out of 10 uh, goalkeeper. And I still think in terms of making saves, in terms of, uh, you know, uh, keeping your team in the game, Ramsdale is a much better goalkeeper. But in terms of playing out from the back, giving your backline confidence and things like that, I think that's what Mikel Arteta looked at and he said, I need a goalkeeper like Raya. Because for the justification for Raya to be in the team, for, for Mikel Arteta is, he stops things that you don't see. He stops situations uh, that you don't see. I think it's about him, you know, uh, his ability and his abil uh, ability to be comfortable um, in uncomfortable situations, getting off his line, uh, playing a very high line um, and things like that, you know, commanding the defense. And of course, those, uh, you know, th those uh, crosses. He's a very good goalkeeper when it comes to correcting, you know, collecting crosses. And that is a weakness that Aaron Ram Ramsdale is facing. He's got to make that better. You cannot be a modern goalkeeper and you cannot collect crosses very well. Because what that does, you become like Vicario, right? You're going to concede so many set-piece go goals and you're going to concede so, uh, concede so many um, goals from, uh, from crosses. And that is maybe where Raya is a much better goalkeeper. So Chelsea are going to sign Aaron Ramsdale. For me, apart from, you know, when you look at the likes of Edin Ketia and all these other players, you know that they are going to go a step down. But when it comes Ram to Ramsdale, I think Ramsdale is either going to go to a Newcastle, he's either going to go to a Chelsea or a Tottenham Hotspur. And I don't want him to go to Tottenham Hotspur. Don't even think about it. I don't even want him to go to Chelsea. I don't want Ramsdale at Chelsea. They will have got a good goalkeeper young brave english goalkeeper who is going to be representing england for the next 10 years ramsdale is a quality goalkeeper there's no question about it there is no question about it those small mistakes that he makes as a uh, you know as a young goalkeeper those ones can be outlined by coaching those ones can be um you know ironed out honestly they will be ironed out uh but however much we say it he's gonna go and chelsea are the club leading the rest to sign him yeah I, there's nothing I can say much about him. We all know that Mikel Arteta lied to us, right? He, he, he said that he wants two top quality goalkeepers at the side because he wanted to rotate them. He wanted one goalkeeper, uh, maybe for the Champions League, and one for the Premier League. He wanted one, to, one goalkeeper to start 10 games and the other to start another 10 games. Mikel Arteta absolutely lied to us. 
because he has one goalkeeper and he doesn't have another one goalkeeper for the FA Cup one goalkeeper for the Champions League and one goalkeeper for the uh, for the Premier League so Ram has got to go we love him we appreciate what he's done uh, but it's high time he left it's high time to left and I think it's, it's also that period of his of his contract where Arsenal can get a lot of money and this is where Mikel Arteta and Edu have been really big geniuses uh, for Arsenal because what you want to do in situations like this you want your club to maximize how much money they can get from you know players i think we'll get a lot of money from the sale of edin ketia who we are going to talk about i think we'll get a lot of money from the sale of ramsdale because these players contracts have just been extended and they are really long right so a player whose contract runs down in 2026 or 2027 those are two or three years uh, still active and valid on his contract so it gives us a lot of power in negotiation so ram is gonna go if we can make a profit of around 20 million um on his deal which i think arsenal can then that's a massive deal same with edin ketia who's going to be recorded as a uh, 100 profit if arsenal can get around 40 to 45 million uh, on edin ketia then that will be a massive massive deal as well so let's talk about eddie because again this is one of the uh, top stories this morning that edin ketia is going to be staying in london not staying at Arsenal but staying in London when he leaves Arsenal this summer the striker is available and Arsenal are willing to listen to offers as per the uh, the athletic as reported by James Mark and Nicholas um with with with, with Edin Ketia he's your boy Edin Ketia is your boy he's not my boy he is your boy and I told you this when you guys told me that Edin Ketia should stay at Arsenal um and I'm not giving him enough respect and I'm disrespecting him. I told you, Edin Ketia can score five goals in five games. But he cannot score six goals in 35 games. That's the problem with Eddie. That is my problem with Eddie. If, Eddie, if you brought Eddie right now to finish the season, Eddie will score five goals in the remaining three games. He will score two at the Old Trafford, one against Bournemouth, and two against um, Everton. But if you give Edin Ketia 35 games... Edin Ketia will still score five goals in the whole 35 games. So, for me, he's, the, he's not a top-level striker, right? And now I can see the picture. Mikel Arteta kept him at Arsenal, not because he wanted him to be um, the next R9 or Van Persie uh, or Adbayo. He kept him at the side just to make sure that when Arsenal are going to sell him, he's still under contract and he has developed... And uh, the team has developed. This is the thing that, uh, you know, Arsenal have done. When you have a competing side like Arsenal, it's easier for you to sell your players, you know, uh, uh, at a higher price. It's, it's, it's much easier for you to sell your, player, you know, your players at a, a, at a higher price. It's what Manchester City did with Jesus, Zichenko, Sterling. Because these players have been, you know, in a successful pool. Come on, you're buying from Arsenal. You're buying from Man City. You're buying from title challenges. You're buying from a successful club, right? You're not buying from Brighton. You're not buying from Tottenham. You're not buying from Newcastle. So at the moment, yeah, I think Eddie has got to go. He wants to stay in London. Crystal Palace wants him. Brighton wants him. Brighton are not in London, I think. Um, West Ham wants him. And Leicester City as well, who are coming from uh, the championship, wants him. Where do I think he should go? I think Leicester City... Um, a bidding farewell, farewell to the era of um, of 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 Jamie Vardy. He's got to go there for me. Th that's the best destination uh, for him to go to. But of course, we'll see what happens with Edin Ketia. Arsenal want around 35 to 45 million pounds. Let's see if a deal will happen. Now, your boy Gary Neville has said that Arsenal's title hopes will be crushed at the Old Trafford. And he says Arsenal, although they've done well, they're not winning the league because Arsenal will not win at the Old Trafford when they take on Manchester United next weekend. I love, Jar I love um, Gary Neville. I really do. Him and, Gary, uh, and, and Jamie, uh, Jamie Carragher are two of my funniest pundits. Not best pundits, but funniest pundits. My best pundit at the moment um, is... Is Simon Jordan uncensored, uncensored, unapologetic. But when we talk about uh, when we talk about um, Man United stopping Arsenal, that is going to take a lot, right? Man United were lucky to stop Liverpool 
because Liverpool were not clinical. And Liverpool decided not to take their chances over, uh, the, you know, over the period of two games, over a period of 190 minutes. They stopped Liverpool in the FA Cup by... Uh, you know, luckily having Liverpool wasting chances, and they stopped Liverpool in the Premier League by luckily having Liverpool wasting chances. If Arsenal don't waste their chances, if Arsenal play the football that we play, the football that we know well that we can play, Man United will be embarrassed at the Old Trafford. So I don't think his statements hold water. I think Man United um, will not stop Arsenal, in my opinion. If the reason any club that can stop Arsenal for me is Bournemouth, actually this early kickoff this Saturday. It's Bournemouth. They are in form. The score goes. They, they don't defend well at all. And then Andoni Areola is not a big fan of teams defending well. But at least we know they can, def uh, they can score goals, they can play a good game, and they can dominate. Man United are nowhere near what I've just described. They are far away from being uh, the true selves, the true Man United. But of course, talk to me in the comment box below if you think Gary Neville has a point that Arsenal will be stopped at the Old Trafford.